We are discussing the role of culture in international human resource management. And in this topic, we are going to introduce you to the concept of culture as it has evolved in the management literature. So we are going to talk about the history of management thought on culture or the concept of culture in organizations. Uh, earlier in uh, the early school of management thought, which is the classical management thought, uh, in that the in, um, importance of environment of an organization, it was not considered to be a, an important aspect. And uh, uh, early management theorists, they uh, tended to ignore the environment and suggested that there has to be a universal one best way. Uh, so the early management thought that was introduced when in the 1920s, uh, Frederick Taylor introduced the principles of scientific management. Uh, in Frederick Taylor, ki aapko, um, management thought ke baare mein, aapne management ke subjects mein bhi padha hoga, ke principles of scientific management were based on um, uh, doing things in the one best way. Uh, and that was based on time and motion studies. Ke, uh, and that was basically on physical work. Ke jab aap labor jo hai, wo kisi uh, bhi kaam ko karti hai, kisi bhi task ko karti hai. To us task ko karne ka jo betreen tarika hai, maximum efficient, less time consuming, less effort consuming tarika hai, wo kya hai. Aur usko aap scientifically jo hai, wo uh, understand karte hai. Aur uske baad phir aap uski training dete hai employees ko ke aap ne is tarah se us physical action ko uh, attempt karna hai. Uh, all right, so uh, Frederick Taylor ka jo principles of scientific management the father of uh, management thought and uh, he introduced the idea of uh, management in organizations and his idea of management was on based on this scientific management principle which was based on universal laws ke ek hi tarika hai kaam karne ka aap usko kisi bhi environment mein le jaye aap us laborer ko kisi environment mein le jaye aap us organization ko kisi environment mein le jaye us usi tarike se aapko kaam karna hai jo ke one best way hai wo kaam karne ke liye that was based uh, that was basically the uh, crux of the principle of scientific management then uh, the classical uh, school of thought, it uh, included Max Weber's concept of bureaucracy. Wo bhi aapne management ke literature mein padha hoga ke bureaucracy ke principles, uh, rational thought, uh, impersonal environment, uh, selection on the basis of merit and all that. That was also um, based on the uh, concept that there could be a universal way to organize the organizations and the principle that Max Weber suggested was the principles of bureaucracy based on the rational thought. So that also um, uh, considered that organizations, they have to be managed in a one particular best way. Then another example of doing things in a very standardized way, regardless of the environment, was actually epitomized in Henry Ford's assembly line. Or assembly line, you have seen that in the organizations, in the industry, uh, uh, employ to make production efficient and effective. Um, and in an assembly line, you have seen that log jo hain usme machines ki tarah usko manage karte hain ek banda jis kaam ke liye assembly line ke upar usko karne ko diya gaya hai usne usi tarah se wo kaam karna hai aur wohi kaam usne repetitively karte jana hai so ye assembly line usme ye ki assembly line ek mechanical tarika hai jisme jo aapki human resource hai wo bhi mechanically hi us process mein involved hoti hai so ye jo classical school of thought hai jisme uh, scientific management ko one best way ko promote kiya gaya isme uh, basically environment or culture ko uh, ignore kiya jata tha uh, so that was the early history of management thought 
Then in the 1950s and 1960s, uh, many uh, students of management, they started to challenge the universalistic view and they started to consider human relations on, uh, on humanistic grounds. Uh, so, uh, us, lekin, uh, jo human relations movement thi, usme bhi yehi uh, kaha jata tha ke aapko ek one best way bahar hal jo hai wo design karna hai aur one best way aapne usko implement karna hai and there is one best way to uh, manage human uh, beings as well. But they um, pointed out and emphasized that uh, uh, there are human needs and abilities and the concept of human being rather than machine was introduced in this human relations movement in the 1950s and 60s. Then uh, concurrently there was emergence of the contingency theory. This was uh, basically, uh, it evolved from the fact that uh, the American organizations, they had to compete with foreign, uh, uh, with foreign competition and uh, uh, they had to adapt to that foreign competition so the environment was changing and uh, American organizations, they were also going global and moving into other markets and from that, uh, from those episodes, it was um, felt that one best way is not possible. So probably we need to understand uh, that what are the factors which will determine that one particular best way. So that it actually crystallized into the concept of organization fit. Now, what was organization fit? Fit was that the organization has to fit with the external factors. And what are the external factors? The external factors are the environmental demands. Now, the environmental demands, they are, as you very well know, that they are based on the social environment, the cultural environment, the economic environment, the political environment. So all these environmental factors, they determine that what kind of organization and organizational structure needs to be implemented. So the contingency theory that brought into the management literature the importance of the environment and that was then later on translated into researchers advocating the moderating influences of national culture on the organizations. So that is how the discussion of culture and then national culture that entered into effective management of organizations. First, it was considered that there is one best way. Then it was considered that human beings are there and they can be managed in one best way. Then the contingency theory which talked about organization, environment, fit. And then when we talked about environment, uh, that meant that we need to take into account the cultural context of the organization. And that led us to the discussion of national culture in, uh, in the management literature. And as it uh, if, uh, as it appeared in the management literature, it simultaneously also appeared in the human resource management literature. So that was a basic introduction of how culture has, been, has evolved as an important concept in management literature.